There are warframes designed for raw power, power. and some designed for ultimate destruction. destruction. But there are those who serve a greater purpose. What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video talking about Frost. I'm going to provide you with an arsenal of builds to dominate Steel Path and much more. Is Frost a solid Warframe? Yes, absolutely, but is he the best at anything? No, he is at the border between very useful and okay, but still a powerhouse. Frost is that one Warframe who was designed as a defensive support frame to keep enemies off the objective while crowd controlling them, also making the enemies vulnerable to incoming damage. To know more about how he functions, let's go over his kit. You ignore his passive because it's stupid and outdated. Freeze! His first ability. You throw a projectile that deals cold damage and explodes on impact with a 3 meter radius. This projectile freezes any enemy it hits. The damage and freeze duration are affected by mods, however, not the explosion radius. It does have an ability synergy where it's used to detonate his snow globe for a large icy explosion that damages and ragdolls enemies. This ability has an augment called Freeze Force, which grants you the cold elemental damage multiplier on all your weapons. This elemental buff will combine with your innate element, forming a combined element, saving you a mod slot. However, if you have an elemental mod equipped on the weapon that has an innate element, Freeze Force will make the modded element a priority, forming a combined element with the equipped mod so you can deal two types of elemental damage with one elemental mod. Alright, on to the second ability, Ice Wave. When cast, you summon a cone-shaped cascading ice spikes that damage enemies and apply cold procs to slow them down. The great thing is that Ice Wave follows the terrain, which can climb stairs or a slope to damage enemies. This ability has an augment called Ice Wave Impotence. After casting Ice Wave, you leave behind a frozen patch that slows down enemies who come into contact with it. Unfortunately, the first two abilities aren't that impressive and are in need of a serious rework. But this is where things take a turn. Snow Globe, the third ability. At first glance, this ability is pretty straightforward. When activated, you summon a snow globe around Frost, protecting you from incoming damage. During the first four seconds of casting this ability, it is invulnerable to all incoming damage. After that, it gets its own health, which scales off armor and strength. A maximum of four instances of globes can be present on the field, and any additional globe past the fourth will remove the oldest globe. But this is not a bad thing, because casting a new globe on top of an existing one will consume the oldest globe and combine the total remaining health values of both globes into a new one. And each time you cast a new globe, the invulnerability period is refreshed. So what this means is, if a snow globe is cast inside of an existing one, they don't count towards the maximum amount of instances that are present on the field. So you can repeatedly cast new ones on the same spot without losing the other three on the field. You and allies can shoot out from the globe but cannot shoot into it. Enemies that enter the globe are slowed by 67% and this slow does not scale with strength. But there's an interesting gimmick that makes snow globe even more deadlier. If enemies are near you and you summon the globe, it freezes and pushes them back and deals collision damage when they collide with terrain, obstacles, and themselves. And this collision damage is dealt as true damage, dealing 50% of the damage directly to the enemy's maximum health, ignoring all forms of defenses. Unfortunately, the true damage bonus does not scale with strength. Snow Globe has an augment called Chilling Globe. This augment has a 50% chance to freeze enemies that enter in the globe. Yep, that's it. This one ability already seems way more interesting than the first two. And finally, onto Avalanche. The fourth ability, Frost summons crushing ice within the area, dealing cold shatter damage while freezing any nearby targets and stripping 60% of their armor permanently. 
Following up with a second cast will fully strip them. However, with 167% strength, you can fully strip with a single cast. Recasting this ability not only stacks on the armor strip, but refreshes the freeze timer, so you can infinitely chain freezes till the enemy dies. The enemies are not only frozen, but are also affected by cold procs, so if they do unfreeze before the cold procs end, they will be slowed. And yes, the freeze duration does scale with duration mods. Casting freeze on a target frozen by avalanche will extend the freeze duration. An avalanche does have an augment called Icy Avalanche. Not the most original name. Casting avalanche on enemies coats you with a layer of protective ice. This protective ice scales of strength and the number of enemies hit. This protective layer works kind of like iron skin, where it has its own health and grants damage and CC immunity until it is depleted. And no, adaptation does not apply to the ice coating. Sticking to the augment and freezing things theme, now let's talk about a unique augment only to frost. Biting. Frost. This augment grants you increased crit chance and crit damage on frozen enemies. This augment is active on any type of freeze applied by allies and Frost. From any of his abilities, Helmet subsumes and even his useless passive. Enemies have to be frozen by ice type abilities for it to be active and not cold procs. Alright, now that you know how his kit works, let's take a look at how to build this Warframe. Starting off with the requirements of the builds. You're going to need two Amber Shards for the casting speed, replacing natural talent from all the builds, because his abilities do have long animations. For example, Avalanche has a cast time of 2.4 seconds and a cast delay of 0.7 seconds. This can get you killed, so reducing the animation is much more beneficial to your damage and and survivability, and two red Archon Shards for the 20% ability strength to balance out some builds. Tau Forge Red Shards will make the builds even better. You would also need the Vazarin Focus School using the Protective Sling. Voice slinging into yourself will grant you 5 seconds of invulnerability and healing over time. And the other requirement is a Decaying Dragon Key. This reduces your shield value down by 75%. Pair this up with Augur Mods and Brief Respite will have you regenerate your shield even faster. So you can have a newer instance of that 1.3 seconds shield gate. I will also be using the Panzer Volpophila as this fox helps me spread vile procs to all enemies nearby. And not only that, it's pretty much immortal. And I can also equip the two synth mods, so holstering guns will have them reload passively. Let's take a look at the first build. This is the Todoroki Frost build, which is an ability nuke DPS to kill hordes of enemies, which combines both fire and ice. The ice to freeze an armor strip and the fire to burn their flesh. For the helmet ability, which is also my DPS ability, Thermal Sunder, Gauss's third ability, it has two modes, cold and heat damage. By quick tapping, you get cold and hold cast gives you heat. However, you can change this in the invert tap hold settings and combining the two elements will give you blast damage. And this blast damage will push and pull in enemies depending on which element you procced first. For additional scaling, the build is also utilizing Archon Vitality. This allows your heat ability to proc an additional heat proc that deals the same damage, pretty much doubling the damage. And this effect does not scale with mod rank. So for those looking to min-max, I would suggest not ranking this mod up. However, we're going to take this even further by applying viral procs on enemies so they take more damage to their health. But guess what? We can take this even further with the Heat Inherit mechanic to scale heat damage and damage over time even further. For more information, please do go check out my guide for Heat Inherit to understand how you can use it to scale your heat damage. For the Arcanes, I'm using Molt Augmented to increase my strength by 60% at max stacks to improve the damage and capping out the armor strip requirements. And finally, Arcane Energize, the boost in energy regen upon pickups. This is an ability spam build, so this is going to benefit you even more. Taking a look at the build, I have growing power for the 25% bonus strength when I proc a status effect. Prime Surefooted for the knockdown and stagger resistance. Max efficiency at 175% with a rank 4 fleeting and a rank 4 streamline. Range at 235% with stretch and overextended. 
This gives Thermal Sunder a 28 meter radius and Avalanche a 35 meter radius. Prime flow for the large energy pool and I have Umbral Intensify just to cap out the strength so it's above 100%. And finally, Archon Vitality to double my heat procs. This build averages around 130 kills per minute. So yes, it's pretty damn good. But then you're going to have Xmas units who won't die from Thermal Sunder. So use any weapon you want to get rid of their overguard. I suggest explosive weaponry like the Kuvazar, Kuva Brahma or even the Incarnate Adapters. Moving on to the second build, which is another ability nuke DPS build that uses Frost's third ability, Snow Globe. Y yes, we're using Snow Globe to nuke enemies. And I'm sure you're going to have fun with this one. It's just a beautiful spam of abilities. I'm using the true damage mechanic from collision damage and amplifying it with viral procs to give it that 4.2 times health damage scaling. Meaning viral procs on enemies plus collision will result in a one shot. However, there is a weakness to this build. The snow globe needs to knock back enemies to provide you with the collision damage. Unfortunately, this ability cannot knock back elite enemy units like Acolytes and Eximus with Overguard. But yet again, you can use Explosive Weaponry to kill Acolytes and help you get rid of Overguard. There's a way you can make enemies collide with one another to provide Snow Globe with collision damage even though there aren't walls close by. And that's by using Fixed Grouping. This means enemies have to be standing and grouped up. There are three ways to do this currently. One is within Snare. This provides you with a tight clump and propagates to pull in more enemies by its own and you can cast it on multiple targets. The other way is by using a Zaw Arcane called Exodia Hunt where slam attacks create an aura that pulls in enemies towards you. This is best used with a heavy blade Zaw using the Rending Crane stance as all of its normal attacks from its standing combo are considered slam attacks. The third method is with Magus Anomaly, a pilot arcane Performing transference, you pull in enemies towards you within 30 meters. Both Hunt and Anomaly also synergize within Snare, allowing you to pull in the clumped enemies wherever you want. There's also another crucial thing to avoid with this build, and that is Ragdoll, meaning avoid Vazarin's second ability Vortex and Ragdoll helmet abilities. Ragdoll is a hard CC and needs to carry out its full animation before a new one is applied. And while enemies are Ragdoll, they cannot be knocked back for the collision damage. Since I'm using a fixed grouping, Ensnare will be my Helminth. And the reason being is that it's just a lot easier to maintain and enemies are bunched up a lot tighter. Now listen up, once they're grouped up, jump above them and cast your globe on top of their heads. This way, you're pushing down and into the clump effectively gaining collision damage without the need of walls. And you can also pair this up with Exodia Hunt and Anomaly for additional ease of use. But make sure they are primed with viral for the collision damage to deal 100% damage to their health so you can one shot them. In terms of arcanes, I'm using Arcane Steadfast, 20% chance to get 3 free casts on any ability. Pairing this up with Energize. Since this is a heavy ability spam build, having as much energy uptime for me to spam abilities like crazy is a lot more liberating. And now onto the build. Shepherd in the aura to increase my pet's health by 300 and armor by 180, just so it can stay alive longer, as I'm going to be using the Panzer Volpophila for additional viral procs if I don't get enough time to apply viral with my secondary utility weapon. Efficiency at max with streamline and fleeting expertise. Range at 175 with stretch and auger reach. Vigilante pursuit or enemy sense for that enemy radar. Prime flow for the large energy pool. Prime content continuity for the duration to counteract the negative duration on fleeting expertise. A very simple yet brain dead build. If you want to change this ensnare loadout to something else, weapon builds that require grouping or just grouping and armor strip, replace the two efficiency mods with Umbral Intensify and any augment of your choosing, whether it be Biting Frost or any other utility mod, and change the aura to whatever you want. All right, now onto a semi support build, which can aid you and allies, providing infinite energy orbs. 
while also boosting your crits to red crit territory. In this build, I'm using Spectral Rage as my helmet, along with the Augment Spectral Siphon. This way, any enemies caught within the rotating mirrors have a 50% chance to drop energy orbs when killed. Not only that, I'm also using the Biting Frost Augment, as this Augment boosts my crit chance and crit damage on frozen enemies. This is a great tool for your guns and melees. Guns have so many ways to boost crit damage, and their crit damage multipliers are way larger than melees. Melees have two crit damage mods, and together you get a 2.5 times crit damage boost. However, if you apply Biting Frost, you get an additional boost while also bumping up your crit chance. And this mod isn't equipped on weapons, but on the Warframe, so it's also saving you a mod slot. For the Arcanes on this build, I will be using Multi efficiency. This grants you 36% maximum duration while shields are active. And the second arcane can be whatever you want. You can use anything to boost the utility or the damage of your weapons. And for the pilot arcane, I will be using Magus Anomaly to pull in enemies into the rotating mirrors to then freeze them or freeze them, then pull them in. Either way works, as long as you kill them within the rotating mirrors to drop that energy. All right, let's take a look at the build. Brief respite in the aura for that energy to shield conversion. Range at 265% with stretch, auger reach, and overextended. With this much range, I get 32 rotating mirrors and a 39.75 meters of range on Avalanche. The two augment mods, Spectro Siphon and Biting Frost for the energy drops and crit chance and crit damage. And then the other usual mods. We don't have to worry about armor stripping on this build, but if you do want to, all you have to do is change Molt Efficiency with Molt Augmented and use a Rank 4 Overextended and equip Umbral Intensify. You will have more than enough range and have enough strength to armor strip. Alright folks, these are the three powerful frost builds that you can use and destroy steel path and they also work real great in the steel path circuit. As frost is a great warframe to have in the circuit as he can protect objectives while also being very dominant on the field. Anyway folks, that has been it from this video. If you've learned and enjoyed something from it, please feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe for more warframe content, streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching and as always. Peace.